God's world came apart. God worked through a man named Abraham to put it all back together, and God promised Abraham three things, land, offspring, and blessing. About 1200 B.C., God answered God's promise of the land. And the people of Israel gathered into the promised land finally, all 12 tribes of them. There was the tribe of Marvin, and there was the tribe of Reagan, and there was the tribe of Chris, and there was the tribe of Barb, and there was the tribe of Mike, and they worked together in a kind of a tribal confederacy, all 12 tribes, not really working together, but you know, they talked to one another and they tried to get through their turf, and it worked for 1,200 years. And then there came an outside threat that broke apart the tribal confederacy, that one that the tribal confederacy could not meet, and the outside threat were the Philistines. They battled the forces of this 12-tribe confederacy until God's people realized that they needed a king. They needed to come together. They needed a monarchy to fight off this terrible army. And they elected a king, who's the first king of Israel, whose name was Saul. And they battled between the Philistines and the Israelites. The Philistines had an awfully large army. And the greatest of all of the Philistine army people was a man named Goliath. Our story is from the 17th, 17th chapter of 1 Samuel. Saul had fallen into disfavor with God. And he had appointed Samuel to go out and anoint a new king. And he did, David. Samuel brought David to Saul. And Saul made David his armor bearer. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together for battle again. They gathered near Soko, which belonged to Judah. And they were encamped between Soko and Azka in Ephes Damon. Saul and the Israelites gathered and were encamped in the valley of Elah. And there they formed ranks against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between. And then a champion came out from the camp of the Philistines. His name was Goliath of Gath. His height was six cubits in a span, about nine and a half feet. He had a helmet of bronze, and he was armored with a coat of mail. And that coat weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze. It's about 125 pounds. He had greaves of bronze on his legs, and he had a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. His spear was the size of a weaver's beam, and the head of the spear weighed 600 shekels of iron, about 15 pounds. And he had a shield bearer that went in front of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out and drawn up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose from among yourselves a man and let him come to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you will be our servants and serve us. And then the Philistines said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight 
together. Well, when Saul and all Israel heard these words, they were dismayed, greatly afraid, because Saul had lost his faith that God would take care of Israel. But when David heard the challenge, he went to Saul and said, I'll fight Goliath. So Saul tried to put David in his armor, but David was not comfortable. He said, I'll go in the clothes of a shepherd and I'll fight with my sling. And he reached down and he picked up five stones and put them in his pouch. Now as Goliath came near to David, his shield bearer was in front of him. And when Goliath saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, What am I, a dog, that you come to me with sticks? And then he cursed David by his gods. And then the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to Goliath, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel who you have defied. This very day, the Lord will hand you over into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and to all of the wild animals of the earth so that the entire earth will know that there is a God in Israel, and this assembly will know that God does not save by sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hand. Now, Goliath came nearer to David, David ran to the battle line. He put his hand in his pouch, pulled out a stone, put it in his sling, and slung it. And it hit Goliath in the forehead. The stone sank in. Goliath fell to his knees and then fell face down. David stood over the Philistine. He had killed him with a sling and a stone. He didn't have a sword in his hand. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Would you all join me in a word of prayer? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As you just heard, so graphically told, David had his Goliath. Ten feet tall. 126 pounds of armor. A spear that looked like a fence rail. No wonder the people of Israel were scared spitless. We have our Goliaths too, don't we? Listen to what Max Lucado says in his book entitled facing your giants. Our Goliaths bring with him bills you can't pay, grades you can't make, people you can't please, whiskey you can't resist, pornography you can't refuse, a career you can't escape, a past you can't shake, a future you can't face. No wonder we're scared, spitless. Which, ladies and gentlemen, might, of course, be the worst and most dangerous Goliath of all. Fear. 
bone-rattling, life-sucking fear. I know that when I'm afraid, I'm absolutely worthless. I do and say and live nothing of any value at all. The Bible knows a good bit about fear. When God sent Moses to lead his people out of Egypt, when God told the Israelites to fight the Canaanites, when the angel of God came to Mary and said, would you be the, wife, would you be the mother of the Christ child? When Jesus sent his disciples out onto that stormy sea, when the women went to the tomb on that first Easter Sunday morning, you remember the words. The first words were, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. There's not a Goliath in the world that God can't beat. Maybe that's why David ran to get his slingshot and then ran to face his Goliath. Maybe David realized that the battle wasn't really between David and Goliath, that the battle was really between God and Goliath. And if that's true, then Goliath doesn't stand a prayer. Don't be afraid. It will suck you dry. I love that little poem that John Maxwell gave so many years ago. I think I remember it. There was a very cautious man who never laughed or played. He never risked. He never tried. He never sang or prayed. And one day when he passed away, his insurance was denied. For since he never really lived, they claimed he never died. Don't be afraid. General George Patton, who said of all, fear is courage hanging on one minute longer. I believe it was Nelson Mandela who said it even more clearly that courage is not the absence of fear. It's overcoming of fear. It's not running away from your fear. It's heading it straight on. I was about to face one of those church meetings that no pastor, Martin, you'll appreciate this, ever want to face, and no person ever wants to go into it. I was always, it was a really a difficult, going to be a difficult meeting, and so I decided that I needed to take a walk to get my head clear before the meeting and went out behind the church. And about two minutes into the walk, I saw this little kid, about an eight-year-old kid on a bicycle, being chased by a stray dog. And the kid was so afraid that he dropped his bicycle and started to run. And I went over and I shooed the dog away. And I picked the bicycle up and I gave it to the boy and he thanked me and he went on his way and I went on mine. Kept on walking and I turned left. Kept on walking and I turned left. And in front of me, the dog had two more of his friends. <laughs> Now, I could have gone back where I came from. I could have gone right, and then I could have gone right. But something, something told me to go straight ahead. And I went straight ahead, and when I got to where the dogs were, they parted. And I kept on my way. Now, that was by no means a 10-foot giant and 126 pounds of, iron, of armor, but it taught me a lesson. Don't shrink away from your giants. Hit them head on. That's what David did. Ran toward his giants. Ran, ran with not only, a, uh, not only a sling, ran with the presence and the power of the living God. Goliath never had a prayer. So who's your Goliath? What are you afraid of? A job loss? Broken relationship? A poor prognosis? An ongoing argument? What are you going to do with it? 
you're going to flee from it. You're going to ignore it and hope it goes away. Or you're going to do what David did and get your God and head straight forward. Max Lucado ends his book, Facing Your Giants, with these words. The next time Goliath wakes you up, reach for a stone. Odds are he'll be out of the room before you can load your sling. And even if he's still there, our God will be there. And ladies and gentlemen, I like our chances. I like our chances.